Afghanistan, uh, uh, a landlocked country. We don't have access to the sea. Uh, we have a um, large population, over 30 million people, but there's, there's no proper census because of the conflict during the last few years. But we have a very high amount of resources. The latest figure that's coming out is three trillion dollars worth of mines we have, mines and minerals. Now that's quite a lot if we can actually access it. That will bring us very high revenue, more than enough for our own country. It will be more than enough for you know, the region. We can help other countries. But the insecurity is blocking us from using that revenue, the current revenue. Unfortunately, part of it is due to corruption and you know, the powder. Uh, there's a lot of more trade happening in the country than, than production. Businessmen find it easier to trade, to bring, uh, to import products from our neighboring countries. Um, that's, you know, one source of revenue from customs and so on. Our production is very low, unfortunately. Uh, although we do have um, dried fruit, carpets, um, many other products that could be exported. The facilities, the environment is not there uh, due to insecurity. Afghanistan very, is very aid dependent. More than 45 um, countries uh, as donors are um, in our country, and an equivalent number, 48, I think, peacekeeping forces uh, in 34 provinces. Not in every single province of Afghanistan, but in many provinces, we have the aid, uh, the, the um, uh, international forces helping us uh, with the security. Uh, but the aid dependency is, you know, if I split it into two, operational budget and the development budget. On operational budget, we're dependent on aid 35% this year. It was much higher before, since 2002, the new government coming in, but it's reducing, it's getting better because we have more revenue. But on the development side, we're 100% aid dependent. We really couldn't do anything without the help of the donor community. Um, so, you know, this aid dependency makes us, you know, very uh, vulnerable. Um, it has increased aid money, uh, uh, increase of aid money in our country, um, has increased corruption in the country. Paris Declaration, of course, very relevant to Afghanistan and <clears throat> all the countries because of the aid that's coming into the country. But the relevance means something else in our country. With the insecurity growing across the country with the number of soldiers being killed and that's the international forces being killed in the country the decisions are different by the donors the donors were not very diplomatic in telling me during the interviews and my team that they do have to make political decisions that it's not what the people need that they make the decisions on or they were indirectly telling me the same thing you know admitting that it's difficult to implement all the principles in Afghanistan, in a country like, you know, in our situation. At the beginning, things were different. Before even PD was signed in 2005, I think there was more aid effectiveness principles being followed than it was after 2005, after it, it, its signature. And I think it's not because, you know, people don't ad agree to it. It's because it's more difficult. Your taxpayers in the countries in the West, they're expecting you to report on quantity in, in return for the lives of these young men in our country, you know, in, in Afghanistan, what, you know, the, for the taxpayer is more interesting, you know, what is it that they're doing in, in our country? And, and therefore the governments, the capitals, the donors have to report back to the taxpayers that this is how many schools we've built. This is how many women we've trained. This is how many women's burqas, you know, the cover has been removed, you know. And the, the quantity doesn't always bring quality. We have a large number of schools across the country, but there's no quality in them. So that sort of makes, you know, the relevant of PD a little questionable. We're not able to implement ownership, you know, the five principles. With ownership, we're doing much better. Alignment, slightly. Harmonization, very difficult. Donors only do information exchange. They don't actually coordinate, they don't talk with the government amongst themselves. There's hardly any harmonization. Managing for results very, very low, extremely low, because the decisions are being political now since 2005, since the increase of insecurity and mutual accountability, very little reporting and very little contact from both sides. Our government's capacity is very low. Uh, so it's not just a one-sider issue, it's both sides, the government and the donor community, both have more difficulty in implementing 
for obvious reasons, because of the insecurity, because of the fragility and corruption, but it's not an excuse. It can be improved and we know the capacity is there. It could have been better, but it's not there.